Okay guys, welcome back. We have another video here for you today. Today we are sitting down with Phil again, but we also have Ziggy Dan, the man we have been talking about in our previous videos, his episodes. He's actually produced a couple more in that time, so we will definitely be showcasing those and promoting those at the end. But we also have him today to talk with us about some more of these sites. And like you've seen in his videos, he's very good at spotting these nubs in India. We're going to keep on going with that trend and show you a couple more temples in India today. And actually a third temple that Phil and I spotted just looking during our last recording. So this next temple we're going to show you after Warangal is one that is just as new to us as it is to everyone else. So, Phil, Ziggy, welcome. How are you guys today? Okay. How are we, mate? Great. It's good to see you here, Ziggy, with us. Fantastic to have you. Congratulations on your new videos, mate. What a brilliant set of publications, may I add. And thank you for joining us today. What a pleasure. How are you, mate? Well, great. We can start with Warangal. I figured that one we had a, a lot of different nubs to look at. And again, Phil, you and I found a different part of Warangal that has nubs that no one's thought to look at before. And it's going to tie in to some of our other stuff that we've looked at in Greece. So I guess we should just start with that one first, right? Because in the previous episodes about Warangal and my channel and other channels, they focus on the temple itself the proper temple in the center that's very ornate and embellished and pretty and we've we've seen this before and we can you know briefly touch on it again that yes there are nubs on this architecture as well you see over here on the left this block has a couple nubs on it and then this gate and maybe some of these other gates down here in the bottom right has a nub on it and that's the exact same spot as a nub on the sun gate at Tiwanaku so we can talk about some real cross-continental connections here because we also have the Chicana shape, right guys? You have the, the, the shape that we see all over Peru, very sacred to them. It shows up here at Warangal. It's actually the footprint of Warangal. So we, we have multiple overlapping hallmarks and connections. But what we haven't talked about is the more rough and um, you, uh, industrial looking um, fortified areas of Warangal, the perimeter walls. So let's pull up some of those today and I'll pick a good one. Well, we'll find a really good quality one to show to show first. I have, how about this one? This is a nice one. So we spotted this one. I think all of us spotted this together a while back, but we didn't have this, we didn't have nearly as good of a quality photo as this. But this one really shows them. So what would you guys like to say about this photo? If I may interject mm -hmm. at this point, I see that on the bottom course arrangement that we've got, what we all study is the nubs. And you've got different variations of them as well. Yes. And as you go up the course arrangement, you have to look very closely. Ziggy has pointed this out to us as well that maybe this could be different generations of building because the nubs stop at a certain course arrangement, don't they, Ziggy? They do. Oh. Yeah, you're right. I We didn't really see this at first, but now that he points it out, it is very curious. Why is there more on the lower courses and not so many up above? And then, yeah, the, also with the course arrangement, we have very thick courses and then very thin, slender courses. What is that about? Was was the uh, the smaller courses done by less capable engineers or other people? I think the soft courses from a different culture. Uh, I think that they were all cut. I think that they've been cut, split in half, and they're thinner. The bottom courses are twice as thick. Mm -hmm. They're stones that have fallen down, probably. Oh, that's a good point. They've been, they've been reused because it's been changed into a fort at a later date. Yes. You can see up above as well. I mean, these, are, these ramparts, these are clearly cruder, smaller stones with mortar. 
know, this is not the same as what's below. And you're right, these, these notched blocks, these could be repurposed bigger blocks. And we spotted this just a few minutes ago. If you guys look really close, you'll see this cluster of holes. What is that about? Reminds me of uh, some holes in Peru, actually, right? In the side of the You get them at Baalbec as well. Yeah, we you do. You get them at Baalbec. A lot of spots. You've also got to look at the polygonal nature of what they were trying to show us on the bottom courses. Yes. Maybe the smaller blocks have got slight bevel line as well. Then you've got a line of what we call standardized nubs that everyone that watches us knows that we call standardized. Yes. And as you go around, you don't get them. You don't get them as maybe one or two. So I agree with Ziggy. I think that this could be a repurposed area, to be quite honest with you. I, I think, think so. at some point you've got a nub, base stone style set of engineers. And as we move upwards, we don't see that same configuration, do we, Ziggy? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like the very top is, is completely devoid of nubs. Even though there is some other curious stuff, yeah, the, the nubs are not present on the top courses. And then, of course, what's above that is just absolutely after the fact. Yeah, I like that photo. So we have some more. Let's look at some of the gates around this because, you know, that's not all. Um, how about... So first, before we, you know, look at some of the walls with nubs, we will show that there are some of these walls that don't seem to have any nubs. They have the beveled edges, the same course arrangements, but these blocks here don't necessarily, uh, they don't really have any nubs that stick out to me anyway. You have the polygonal aspect, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you also have the fact that the megalithic builders go up to a certain level. Yes. You right. can maybe stay on the seating arrangement that there might be nubs on the front, but it's showing different maybe. engineers for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can see the difference in the uh, surface treatment. They could do really flat and smooth if they wanted to, but then these lower ones tend to all have the same kind of slightly pitted nature to them, both sides. Yeah, absolutely. You can see on above the gate as well that that's a completely set of different builders again. Yeah, completely different. There was no way that that has been purposed at the same time. No. the blocks that we're seeing to the right hand side and the left hand side yeah yeah and i have more yeah. more of this so we'll uh we'll go over to one well, i wish i had the better quality photo of this one let me let me uh double check well we do have this one this one's nice this one yes in the previous photo same angle worse quality this is just turned and better quality but yeah what we're looking at here it's very complicated. We have what looks like something on top that's later, smaller, and then we have this same repeating, the same repeating s system of of wider and and slender courses. Sometimes what jumps out to me there is, do you see how big the main door is? Andrew? That's the of course, yes. The the large door and then you and have then the small door. You have the smaller door to the left. It, it jumps mm. out like Baalbek or the Treasury. Uh -huh. etc. Very good point. You know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you know you've also got polygonal stonework that we see inside the bit. merit as well. That's right. Argument. Yeah, a little bit. But then you'll notice on the on the right hand, it kind of it makes me pause because you'll see how there's the, the polygonal nature kind of goes away sometimes. And then it'll, it'll, <laughs> it'll start back up again, right? It, the polygonal nature has a tendency to And you've got like one away. times one nub above that small doorway on the left-hand side. That's right, on the L-shaped block, you know, right? Yeah, and also on the left-hand side where you've got the doorway, just above it, you've got one on its own. That's right. If, I mean, we could jump into quarry, and couldn't we? If these were quarried stones, then wouldn't they all have them on? That's a good point. And why on the blocks like this one, it's not centered. It's off on the corner of the block. Not a good spot if you're going to lift from or, you know, even... Well, uh, you can also see that that block is tailored for the blocks above, so it was necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Or it wouldn't have fitted, would it? That's... Yeah. What do you think, Ziggy? What's your... I think take that the creepy like? hole wall is a later addition. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Now let's let's talk about yeah, this. Yeah. We Ziggy had a very good point here. 
Now, some of these gates and doorways are fitted up to these walls, so they look like they might have been added on after the walls were completed. Yeah. And I, I want to point out here again with this right hand, that's a very straight course. They were able to adjust from polygonal to standard course on the fly like that. That's very impressive. And you'll Do you know, see that you've got that almost square style filler stone as well? Almost and it's like on it both was sides as well, Phil. In. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is wild. It's a mirror image almost, you know, like or at least they were uh, repeating their their little technique here, this little nod or whatever this is implying. <laughs> they did it on both sides, right. Do you remember the photo that we saw where it shows the different colors of building? Like yes. they were almost showing we'll jump to like a one. personal building A to Z with the color of stone that they may have used, for yes. argument's sake. Let me pause and I'll go to that one. Okay, here's, here's the photo. Yes, like you were saying, Phil, they were doing something with colors of blocks here, right? There's this one very red block that stands out from all the others. Yeah, it kind of like looks to me that they were trying to show mineralogies of stone, like with the red, you might be sort of looking at Petra. The blue I always look at is Warangal, where we are. Right, it's dark. The yellow might be the limestone of, let's say, Egypt or South America. Mm -hmm. But why colour them like that? Why show us that? Yeah, good there point. There has to be a reason. Mm -hmm. And then to the left of the wall, You've almost got your trapezoidal window with the beveled edge. Oh, yes. You've right. got, and I know, Ziggy, you're massive on that. This could be completely repurposed. So what is this telling us, mate? Speak of the dissings. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Outside walls show different, totally different course where. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could be, I mean, it could be elephant stables. Back at India. That's not a bad idea. I mean, a big door yeah, for an elephant. Idea. Yeah, 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 and like Ziggy was saying, over on the right, it looks like these, or at least this gate in general, the, the walls have been butted up against the wall on the side. So the walls on the sides were finished first, then this gate was added. Now, how much later? I think it's knows? a good point as well, where the stonework could have been moved on the header. If you've got such big animals, let's say, like elephants, whacking into the walls over time it could have moved it but to the right hand side which is original to me and you can almost see burnt stonework polygonal yeah. massive megalithic stones yeah that looks original to me me too so i do agree with ziggy that that front wall there could be a completely later addition it might be yeah still by the same maybe uh advanced uh skilled engineers but this might have yeah, been great might have just been well, a the left, the left hand side, Andrew. You've also got the second arrangement, like a bevel block, haven't you? Right, yeah. I mean, second course up. So, our mm -hmm. engineers were there. What the colors are telling us, I'm not 100%. I'd love mm -hmm. any specialist Indian architecture experts to show us does that show yeah. us mineralogy? Does it show us cause content? Yeah. Does it show us different time periods? I'd love to hear everyone's point yeah. of view. Is there, a, is there a cultural significance maybe to certain stones and walls like this? Yeah, what, we need some more context here. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we'll move on to a few more photos. I have a couple more I want to bring up. This one in particular, we are talking about more of this rebuilding. So maybe these inner flanking bits were added later to make the gateway smaller. I like that because they don't seem, you know, again, smaller stones, different color, and they don't seem to fit as well. They seem like they've been tailor fit to made up with these older walls or with these more substantial walls. There's a massive thing I'd like to talk about. I here. know what it is. Go ahead, Phil. Go ahead and say it's it. on the bottom right hand block. Yes. And where we see the scrape marks per se at Egypt, mm -hmm. we've interjected could this be a similar mark to the ones we see around the Cleopatra temple, the Philae temple, where everybody says scrape marks. So we were looking here at the example at Warangal, and it leads on to the Philae temple that 
we all have been looking at with reference to what people look at as the scratch marks or scrape marks and I think it's relative here if we explain that those same marks are identical to a angle. Now, mm -hmm. if we look at that, yes. and if we look closely, it's got the nubs on there at the Philae Temple. Of course. Also, yes. does that not suggest to you that there was a power output rather than a scrape mechanism? If yeah, you would you see them here, it, down by the bevels and where the nubs are, you see more scratches. And then now, a, a blank spot, if and then they, a cluster. Yeah, of course. Now, if they weren't scratches, and they were, say, for argument's sake, testing the technology that was being used to perform that, mm -hmm. it would mean that we would have to condense the technology, i.e., say, if we were using cold fusion, and we were creating small black holes to produce vitrification, now, vitrification can be produced by heat, and we can see that in other examples in Egypt where they could have been testing that. We see this on Ben uh, Uncharted X's fantastic photos. Yes. And he shows us these are not just great marks. No, no, no. There's more we going on. We see there's far more going on here. What these do you are... think of this, Andrew? What does the clamp tell you here mm -hmm. about the vitrification process this is not sharpening arrows for me no. it's a test of technology it does i mean it, we might be talking about a scratch made by a tool right but i don't yeah think, of course of I, course i don't think we are talking about a primitive spear point making this mark we are talking about maybe a an advanced tool of, of unknown origin maybe it's something like the shamir of solomon in mythology or the vajra of india you know there are absolutely there are mythological parallels to what these could represent but yes well if you're harnessing a specific power if you were looking at say cold fusion a technology like that and you were producing mini black holes at a molecular level when they reverse on themselves like Sherman has showed us on specific things, then maybe it would leave that specific vitrification. If you were testing heat levels, you were testing application of that heat level. Mm -hmm. Now, that brings me to another point where you've got the clamp on the side of it. We see yes. the clamps all over the ancient world. We see them in South America, China, Egypt, and so on. Mm -hmm. When they were metallic, and you were testing your application, then maybe when that clamp was spent, could it have turned to the stone? That is all a requirement of mineralogy. Cold fusion is a technology that we are actually learning. Would they be testing on these scrape marks around the Philae temple, around the India uh, Warangal, the mm -hmm. examples that we're looking at? Would it just be a test? So. They could see whether we, they were getting the technology correct later on down the line, Andrew, maybe. Well, and then when the clamp mm -hmm. was spent and the circuit was done, it turned to stone. It's just an avenue of research I'm looking at. What do yes. you think of that? It brings up a good point because we do see stone clamps in situ in some places. So there is the, 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 the juxtaposition of metal and stone in these clamps. And like we saw back at the, the, the kiosk of Trajan, it really does make me wonder about w the dispersion of these scratches, right? So if it was just simple spears, it'd be all over the base everywhere. But no, it's, it's, it's clustered, and it's almost like, yeah, they were, they were scraping off the tip of their tool to prepare their tool, or maybe the, the tip was clogged, or I have no idea, some, something fantastic. Like a solder and iron. Like, like a, a solder and iron. iron. Or a welding or gun. I, I say those analogies gun, a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think in those terms, at least, you know, because that's that's what these these traces are making me think of. Wouldn't it make more sense on some of the huge and more megalithic buildings that we see, i.e. like Baalbek, the Philae Temple, you know, the Great Pyramid of Giza, and here where you're seeing the vitrification of stone, there must have been heat application at some point. Now, if you were looking at it on a molecular level, they would have had to have tested it. They would have had to have tested it. Of course they would have. What are your thoughts on that, Ziggy? When you focus into the interior of the gate, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Under the way. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the line. It's a it's a darkened line, and it, it's on a lot of temples. We call it the water line, but we don't necessarily know if it's always yeah. water. But yeah. it yeah, there's some there's a it's a sedimentation line. Something there is there is a darkened patch, and they see yeah, inside be, the gates and the interior wall. Yes, inside as well, and it, and it corresponds with these scratch marks, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Here's definitely. something I just noticed: a drain hole down here in the bottom, cut into that block those two blocks actually it's one of those complex holes that goes over two blocks so how about if that? you needed to cool something down if you needed cooling would you not have those holes as a water cooling it's you just needed something like when we look at the boxes the lycian boxes the egyptian boxes if they were containers for technology the seraphian boxes things like that We've looked at dolmens. We've looked at all sorts that could have contained that. When they come to the more ornate work that we're looking at now, and yes, it does perform the nubs. We've got bevel blocks. But why have those specific scrape marks in one area? Right. It's like you're te testing a tool uh, for yeah. heat application. I get that feeling as well. Like like the, they were preparing their work and their, their tool was dirty or clogged. And you had to scrape it and, you know, do it against the temple. Now, why did they choose to do it against the temple like this on the outside, on the finished surface? I don't know. But it just, the, the, the clustering, the patterns, and the parallels across countries now, what does this mean? I think it's more than just Romans sh sharpening their spears or... Uh, You've got to look at it as well, just on that one side, Andrew. Right. When we talk about variations of nubs, which is our profession. Sure, right. You have got one specific tiny small section that contains the blocks. Yes, there might be individuals elsewhere. Right. But they like are segmented there. to that area. Yes. And you've also got, on the bottom right-hand side, the testing of the tool. Now, could that mean setting to the tool? And the specific engineer looks at times one, times two, times two, times one. That's how we set the tool. Now we can do the specific columns. Because let's be fair, these things are out of proportion to what we could do today. Mm -hmm. So there had to have been a code, a language, something that set what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Now, if we surmise that, like we see the Serapian boxes, if they were containers for technology, a production line like Guy says, for argument, say, go a battery mm -hmm. that you and I surmise. If they were containing technology, you would have to test it somewhere, wouldn't you? Sure. It does seem like, and you notice <coughs> the, the clusters of nubs, there are more nubs where there are more scoops. And as you, as the nubs go away, you know, there are less and less scoops, except for right down here, you have this one last cluster. And you know there are and more... that looks exactly like the Indian one that we have been looking at at our angle today. That specific doesn't it? cluster, it really does. It almost you know looks like three or four, maybe five scoops in one spot. And yeah, that really reminds me of our um, of our of our war angle spot. I mean, it's identical. We don't it's have identical. A, we don't have any more than this. Granted, this is our only spot so far. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, now we'll we have to look for more. Absolutely. Too, but... Absolutely. That's very compelling to me, though. It is. It is. And like the colored stone as well that we see here. That's right. That one's very pink. Where, right? mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, Ziggy prescribes that a lot of this site could be repurposed. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. I think it was completely different in antiquity. Could have been. I really do. I think that Warangal may be one of the most ancient sites in the world, but it I was completely it different. Than stole. Yeah. The colored stone was because they'd used all the other stones in the area. They must have imported that from somewhere else. That, that's a very good point, right? They've, they've had to switch quarries. Okay, and a few more things we're going to look at here at Warangal. Now, Ziggy and I have talked about, again, the inside, the, the, uh, the nice ornate temple, but then right outside, around these more defensive-looking walls, we also have these very big steps or seats, like amphitheater seats. And I'm they sure... are like amphitheaters, I agree, and what, 100%. And what yeah. do you guys see on the amphitheater seat? A nub. Right? 
nubs on these straight seats. Away. Straight, straight away. Straight away. I mean, you can look right over in the same photo where this is where we just were with that doorway with the nubs. This is right here next to it. You can see how large these blocks are and how this gate was probably made up against this. So this amphitheater or this set of steps was probably earlier and part of the original build. So I have Great. another photo of this that's not as good. It's, the quality's not as good. I'm going to make you guys squint. But just to drive the point home, so, so one isn't going to do it, I know. We'll see if I can get you all the other photo here. Yes, I know it's not very good. But for the trained eye, if you zoom in and look over here on the left, one on this block, two on this block. Very small little nubs on these long, large slabs. Definitely not. You've also them. got to look at the point, Andrew. If this was quarried stone and it was just a, every single time we take this out of a quarry in Warangal or Egypt or somewhere else, this was a standardized operation to like Prien-esque style. Preen, right? Mm -hmm. And and um, it, 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 Myra, it simply Hierapolis. It isn't on. It isn't on, uh, uh, Petra. 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 Delphi, well. we can name them all day. Delphi, yeah. all we kinds can of name them all day. Halicornasses. There's 249 different amphitheaters at in least, the world. At least. At least. And these are showing singular ornate nubs on not every single step. Correct. No, 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 Correct. no. Yeah. Just on one here and there. Just like Is this it others. an engineering mark? I think so, and it's gonna. It has to tie into what we were talking about in my amphitheater episode. I mean, this is the same phenomenon. Now it's in India. Agree. And then when you're going from Petra to Priam to India, Warangal, that then suggests it can't be coincidence through repetition of quarrying. Mm -hmm. That is impossible. It's too specific, and at this point, it's way too specific. And there's too many other repeating hallmarks on top of it, right? The Chicana shape, the nubs, the polygonal walls, the bevel blocks. It's it's building up. We're building a very compelling case. The lozenges, the concentric circle. The metal the clamps. 10 or 12. Yeah, I agree. You know, you know, it's all there. Just as unconducive. Yeah, I agree. All right, we'll move on to this new site we're talking about now. So next, we're going to move about 65 kilometers away from Warangal to a site called Palampet. And this, Phil and I just stumbled upon while we were trying to find more of those uh, amphitheater seat photos, those step seat photos. We were looking, you know, just through the uh, Google algorithm and how it gives us photos. And this site popped up. The first photo, we knew we were on to something. Right, Phil? Right away, you can see. Yeah, yeah. You can see on the right-hand side, on yep. the column. On the columns, this, yes. Where no. And this big square one on this blank stone, right? Yes. Wow. But not wow. on the left stone, right? Yeah. We didn't see them on the steps. I don't know how many people in India will actually know of this temple. I'd I, love to hear from them. Um, I've never heard of documented it. on here. Yes, me too. But I, if you I look as well on the left-hand side of the window, you've got almost lozenge styles. Yes, the, got... little, the little checker pattern. And yeah, you zoom in, it is the actual Chicana shape again. You're right. Yeah, it is, it is. And with the columns being nubbed at the bottom, mm -hmm. look at those square shapes. We find them on every temple that we've looked at. This one's curious, Phil. Uh, this one has little bumps on top of the nub. That's very curious. Who, to the left hand side as well, you've got a square nub mm, too. That's right. Yeah. And I, it's like a pitted middle, which says to me the mineralogy is exactly the same as the stone. I think so. That's red. The one on the right is gold. Right. But it's coloured in afterwards. But they are specifically yeah, the, the same mineralogy of the stone that was used. Yeah, there's some staining. But yeah, th this is obviously the stone that the pillars and the blocks are made out of. And why yeah, absolutely. They're not on the steps here, which is curious, you would think. But then, of course, it's being excavated. You see the dirt around it. How much farther down does it go? Where's the actual foundations, right? Yeah, the foundation of that would show, in my opinion, more nubs the further down that we went. Very likely. Temple, Very so. likely. Mm -hmm. And you'll yeah, notice... It's the ah, this is the curious. Second. How about this? A tiny little square hole where that 
where a nub should be on, you know, the nub is on the other side. On this side, it's a square hole. Very curious. Like maybe an inverted nub, an inverted square nub, perhaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what we'll show you next. I'm sorry, go ahead, Ziggy. The full discoloration. Uh huh, you're right. Yeah, I just um, brought that up too. Where the room took the chips off. Yeah, yeah, let's, let me see if it'll let me stay zoomed in here. Yes, it looks like there is a little bit of a discoloration around it, the darkening. That's curious. Yeah. And, and then, of course, the mineralogy between these two different stones. This is a different type of stone than this. And then we'll see in other examples where there's like statuary and Nandi cow statues and stuff inside. They're going to be a darker stone, that very polished serapium like box stones. But this People next speak to us, Andrew, about how the ornate work would have been carried out mm -hmm. in India because of literally the magnificence of how well it's done. Agreed, right? Well, on this small temple here, we don't just see one or two hallmarks, do we? We're seeing literally a obituary of all the hallmarks, the square, mm -hmm. column nubs at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We're seeing different mineralogies and colours of stone used. Mm -hmm. Now, when we looked at this temple next to it, yes. we found probably one of the best examples of nub temples we've ever seen. Yes, look at that. Ziggy, you were brilliant in telling us how the arrangement on this temple could have been formed. There's so much to look at here. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, we've got variations of nubs, which in your opinion, Ziggy, was... That's got all the bars. Mm. And the Definitely. small ornate bars have been had a long way to... See, I could see that yeah. as well. We, that's a very good point because what's on the left is much better held together than what's on the right. The What's on the right has been you know, shaken by some kind of earthquake cataclysm and it's it's obviously become dislodged but the 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 structure with the nubs on it is still intact it's still straight all its courses are still straight this was this was the most advanced the you know the 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 strongest part of the structure and do you see the variation within the nubs on there yes they're large like, right they're, these are yeah, big for the massive. wall Mm -hmm. You've got standardized times two. That's right, the standard You've got shape. Times one. You've got where a filler stone maybe could have been added. Yeah, that's curious. That You've... little hole there could have been a, maybe a gutter or the drain spout again, something like that. Maybe. Yeah, the drain spout phenomena right. that we keep finding. Right, this could I be wonder fun. whether any of our Indian temple experts could tell us yes. whether there is a separate side here. To this specific temple that we're finding also i look at the top part of it and i refer to work that i do with dave at uchronia utopia could there have been some sort of star alignment center at the top i say that because we're finding bevel blocks at the top of there yes yes they do it's have bevel edges the quality but look at Fair. the bevel edge blocks at the top of there something's What's going your on your thoughts on that it makes me wonder phil right because yes there's mortar it's crude masonry but there's an attempt here at making the, the 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 surface treatment of these older or maybe just better blocks. So yeah, what was going on on top of this temple? Why did they why did they think to put these up here? Was it an observatory of some kind, a platform to uh, you know do celestial observations and calculations? Well, I'd like I I personally like to see. So I know this is really hard because we find HD pictures through google and you know different applications mm -hmm. i'd love to see on top of there what's behind yeah that bevel set okay. what was there mm -hmm. and, uh, have a look at the uh base stool like where your cursor is now ah with the with the grooves right Ziggy? yeah see now we've seen these in I'll egypt it. it could be like the uh, repeating wedge holes right but you know yeah. There might be a little bit more uh, complicated answers to that, just like with these scoop marks, you know. It might look yeah. like a wedge hole, but maybe there's something more advanced going on it, that creates a similar artifact in the stone, right? It might still be part of the splitting process, 
but it might not just be wooden wedges or, or could it could it pertain to that there may be another level underneath there it could have i mean could, look could at this stone in general let's t- let's think about this this stone has a very sharp edge on the top part it's been worked but they left oh, the lower yeah. half very rough look how rough the uh, the next the next stone to the right yeah mm-hmm. the foundations is this all one stone? This might be two stones here. Yeah, but yeah, they're very rough. But then, yes, the, the, the very next course, they've gone completely pristine, sharp, and smooth. And do you notice as well how ornate every single temple we see in India is and how crude this bottom layer is? Yeah. It just doesn't ring true with some of the temples that we see there yet. It contains all the hallmarks of the most ancient builders and engineers. Right. So something yeah. was going on here. So I think Ziggy's onto something with maybe this left so hand building being older, because you'll notice some of the motifs change as well. The uh, the 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 border change. I mean, it's it repeats, but it's what it's would they con- the what would they have contained in that no path, Ziggy? Oh, I wonder. I don't know the sky. The shrine, yes, yeah, th- that would be the Maybe a shrine or the uh, power the, source or um, 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 mm-hmm. the Shiva lingam, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, agree, agree, mm-hmm. agree. And we've agree. seen that before, where there's been internal nubs in these chambers with the Shiva lingam in them, or with yeah. you know on the columns nearby. So absolutely, yeah, absolutely. What a fantastic temple! We are so lucky to, to find family. this. Yeah, there's only three photos, guys. You know that's the best one. You can see this other front angle. There really aren't any more nubs. I mean, there might be. If you look to the left hand side of the steps here, uh, Andrew, almost like you've got like a facade that's fallen down. Yes. You know, it like shows to me like you've got. I know I'm a massive advocate of subterranean levels, but. What on earth could have been underneath there? Yeah, and you notice what, the retaining why? wall. This is different. This is just block and mortar, brick and mortar. So it's, it's shoring, yeah. shoring it up. Shore, you know, And like we saw in the previous photo, that part of the foundation was still being excavated. It really makes yeah. you wonder how far down they go and you know what's, what's inside and the bottom of them. Yeah, I agree. Or could it contain power? Could there you it go. Contain... I found another one. Over here on the right. Look at that. Look at that. So yeah. I mean, so it was part of the original build was the nub builders. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. But it maybe was a nub build. But Do you see underneath it could have a bevel line as well? Could that be a bevel line just slightly underneath it, that nub? It might actually, and that would be that would make it more precision than the other blocks around it. Yeah. Oops, well, it would also pertain to other sites as well, wouldn't it? I oh, and by the way, there's your uh, there's your very dark stone, polished Nandi inside, uh, right? The shrine area. That's not the shrine. The shrine is farther in. But yes, this darker stone that's very uh, nicely polished. But yeah, we'll go back over here. I think you're right. There is a bevel line on this block. So, I mean, if you're talking about a bevel block with a nub on it, you could be talking about Jerusalem, couldn't you? Because the exact same thing exists there. The Levi Mausoleum. The Levi you could mausoleum. be talking about in Turkey. Right, yes. You know, pitted middle there where it's coming across darker slightly on that because of age maybe maybe yes and another angle where we can see the uh the rough edge of that block from before with the grooves in it over on the left i mean people laugh at me with this comment and i don't care but with the 3.75 million year timeline of an engineer <laughs> within the hinduism it's in Why are our hallmarks in stone being shown so concisely right. over India on a ley line on all their temples over a thousand kilometers plus? Yeah, it's like why with are the... they all being shown? It is not coincidence. No, it's like with the Shamir of Solomon and the Vajra and these things that we mentioned in their mythology. You know how how much of their mythology do we take as truth? I mean, is there there's parallels that that might explain some of this? And I have the, I don't have any better explanation. There's there has not been a recreation or a replication of what we see on these ancient temples. Oh, I completely agree. Copies, yes. Yes, imitations. When you look at the more ornate, complete 
temples in India. Mm-hmm. I've got to be honest, it's some of the best work I've ever seen. Me and we've well. studied every block in the ancient world, more or less, you and I. Yes. India is, is unparalleled. And we like we talk about with their columns Parallel, especially, yeah. right? The columns, they're more than just lathe turned. They've got all kinds of square edges and spiky bits and then figurative carvings on top of that. They're amazing. Which which does suggest, like we said earlier on, that there was a power output of the most fine, unlearned technology out there. We have to apply different realms of thought to how they got to that. Because that is not copper chisel sticks and stones, is it, gentlemen? No, no. This no. is this is way more advanced and way more mysterious. Yeah. I agree. I well, agree. well, guys, we're almost out of time. Uh, that was a couple, just a couple sites, Warangal region, real close to each other, but a whole bunch of new finds that none of us really knew about before. We, we of course, knew that there were nubs in this area and all this and that, but if, when you go around the second and third time on these, these sites, you can find all kinds of things sometimes. And, of course, can I was... say a massive thank you? to Ziggy Dan yes. for coming on our show today yes. and for all his hard work on the nubs because I've got to say to you, Ziggy, you are one of the best nub finders and production artists of the phenomenon that I have ever seen. And thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. Good, Phil. Yes. Thank you, Ziggy. Those, those videos Absolute are perfect. Honor. Mm-hmm. It's an honor. Well, thank you, guys. And we will continue this conversation in the future and we will also go into other avenues and other regions but i think in the next couple we might continue this india trend we have a few more of these temples to talk about some more new finds but i would love to go back over to turkey because we have a lot of new sites over there in turkey thanks to us an account on instagram so look forward to some more from india and more from around the world with phil and ziggy and hopefully some more people in the future thank you guys the very best.